Here now is the House Minority Leader, Kevin McCarthy. Uh, Mr. Leader, thanks for joining me tonight. So when we look at uh, all of these uh, social media platforms, they're no friend of conservatives, they're no friend of free speech, and these platforms really have become the, uh, the public square of debate today. Uh, if you guys win the House in November, can Republicans do anything to push back and get more freedom on these platforms? Yes, we can and we will, Sean. But, you know, the greatest threat to free speech isn't coming from a law in Congress, because it's bound and protected by the First Amendment. Where it's really coming from is these politicians pushing these private companies to become government and utilize them, just like they're doing on the GoFundMe, that the politicians are pushing because they don't like what the truckers are doing, don't provide them the money, or the YouTubes don't put us up, or you've watched time and again what Google and the others have done. But they're also protected by government itself, that the, their liability protection. But if they're going to pick and choose what can be said on their platform, whether they're following through on what their mission is of passing money through, they should no longer have that legal protection. They should be able to be sued. And we need to look at it from an antitrust perspective. What are they doing to other small businesses moving up? This is exactly why I moved to use Rumble instead of YouTube. I've been on Rumble as the premier one that I utilize in one month, and I have more followers than the years that I've been on YouTube. That will tell you right there enough about what people are using in these private companies to be even more powerful than government itself to deny our voice. And Mr. Lee, you make a good point because I also am on Rumble. I'm on Getter. Um, I think it's fascinating that now people have gone to give, send, go instead of GoFundMe. And I, to your point, it was interesting that Jen Psaki uh, in the White House briefing room is encouraging these companies to actually censor speech. It's, it's outrageous. But I want to go back to the majority because I think, I think Republicans are going to win. It looks very favorable that you very well may be the next Speaker of the House. And I think as people sit around their kitchen tables, they talk about crime, inflation. They're outraged by the lack of border security. And now I know that you guys in the House, uh, if you take the majority, can't pass legislation because Joe Biden probably won't sign it. But is there things that you can do with the gavel to actually bring transparency to the horrible things that have been happening under this administration and Democrat rule? Yes, John, you're right. And uh, last time we took the majority, you led the way of helping us get here. And uh, we miss you, but we like seeing you on TV. Um, <laughs> you. You, you have a very strong voice, and we're glad you're keeping it out there. But what I will tell you is, yes, we're going to pass legislation and good legislation, make it very difficult for the president to sign it. But we also have another responsibility to hold this administration accountable. Look today what we just found out. This administration is now going to spend $30 million from hardworking taxpayers on buying crack pipes for drug addicts. They think this is somehow helping them when it comes to racial equality. That's what they're literally saying. But we can get to the origins of COVID. 900,000 Americans have died, 5.7 million in the world, and this administration and this leadership led by Nancy Pelosi has done nothing to find the origins of it. Nancy Pelosi goes and tells athletes at the Olympics, American athletes, not to protest, not to stand up for their own rights. We're going to find an attorney general and hold him accountable when he goes after parents who just want to be involved in their children's education. That's powerful kitchen table stuff that we could fundamentally stop instead of, they're not terrorists, they have a say. That's why we came out with the Parents' Bill of Rights. I think when you look at the accountability along with the synergy of passing the legislation that partners with that, that is a very powerful and a reason why we should be in the majority and America would be stronger. Well, this is a great point, uh, Leader, because I look as a parent of nine kids, I want to have some say, I want to have some control over, you know, what my kids are learning in school. I don't want the FBI to come after me uh, like this administration has, you know, uh, sicked uh, the FBI and the DOJ on parents who are just voicing their opinion. But also as a parent, you know, Mr. Leader, I look at crack pipes when we're $30 trillion in debt, the fact that there's been no restraint on spending with Democrats and the fact that our kids, my kids, your kids, are going to all have to pay this money back, whether it's through higher taxes or a lower standard of living or a uh, decreased economic growth. And, and the other problem is they've got the mandates sitting in the schools. These children are going to be being held back because they're wearing these masks. Children, especially young, need to be, be able to see when people talk. They need to have the help going forward. And this virtual education, because the teachers' union doesn't want to be in the classroom, 
this is harming our children's and their future's um, ability to, to move forward. But you're right about this debt. But remember what happened at the very beginning when the Democrats have one party rule, where they have the House, the Senate, and the presidency. The first thing they did was pass $2 trillion, said it was about COVID, and only 9% went to COVID, but it created the inflation we're living with now. And you know what? If that bill was really about COVID, why would we be waiting around for tests? The funding wasn't there. They wasted it on their own pet projects, just like they wanted to do with Build Back Better. More inflation, and that's a tax on every single American. Yeah, I know it is, Mr. Leader. And you mentioned finding the, uh, the origins of COVID. I hope you use your gavels to get to uh, some truth there. But also what's frustrating as a parent, you know, again, you mentioned these kids that are all masked up in schools. I hope we'd look at the NIH and the CDC who have come out with recommendations for, you know, masking up our kids when now we've heard studies that say, listen, these cloth masks don't really do anything to protect our kids. They've encouraged, you know, double dose vaccines and boosters. And now we've seen throughout the country, all of us in our personal lives, people who are boosted even with the vaccine, they're getting COVID and they're spreading COVID. I hope we look at what what was happening in these government um, health institutions that have given the American people such bad advice. Well, it's even worse than that, Sean. And, and I know you've been there. You've been to the Situation Room at the White House. I remember at the very beginning of COVID, being in there for a briefing one mor morning with Dr. Fauci, who was advocating not to wear a mask, that the humidity would even give you a better chance of contacting COVID itself. This was where he's been on every single position. And why isn't he open enough to know, did we give funding and, and money to go into China to do some of this testing? And why aren't we mandating that we know where this originated from? Instead of trying to mandate control over these children and every other parts of our life. You know, what do they want? Force people to have the vaccine so they won't get COVID like you'll still get? Look, I'm fully vaccinated. I have the boost as well because I believe in that part. But why would government ever mandate that on individuals? And it's all about control. If you're in Washington, D.C., you can't walk into a restaurant or eat unless you show your ID. But they'll never have you show your ID if you want to go vote. I think they have it backwards. Or, Mr. Leader, if you want to come across the border, right? You can come across the border, show no ID. <laughs> it's insanity in America. And that's why I hope, you know, if Republicans take control, if you're the next speaker, that you bring the power of the gavel and you bring transparency that so many Americans want. And we want to debate. We want to talk about this stuff. And that's how we get to better policy. And I, I, I'm pretty confident that that's what you and a Republican majority would do. And I know you're busy today. And I want to thank you for joining us uh, on Fox Business tonight. We appreciate it. Well, Sean, it's great to be on. And give my best to Rachel and everybody else. Else. Will do. Thank you so much.